Welcome back for some more stuff doing. So my neighbor's finally done with his chainsaw, which is good. So it'll be quieter. Uh, and uh, we're getting ready to tinker with this thing a little more. So um, came out, checked. Everything that we sprayed off and cleaned the other day is now dry. We got a day and a half ago now. Uh, so today, what I really want to do is get this thing prepped off painted so then we can start putting accessories back on. I've got uh, plug wires, radiator hoses and belt that need to get thrown back on it. Uh, and I also want to check timing and change the heater core hoses. There's a handful of little things we want to still knock out. But um, I don't really want to put any more parts on it until we paint it so I don't have to mask off as much. So we're going to start with that and uh, make this thing look a little better. You're probably wondering why I always start with the biggest hunk of junk I can find and try and make it nice. Uh, some of you, some of you get it. Uh, the ones that get it know that uh, a truck like this that was in pristine shape is a several thousand dollar vehicle. I mean, if this thing was, I saw one of these actually online yesterday. It was a 75, I believe. Totally redone, beautiful yellow cab on it. Not a speck of rust, fully restored. Had the almost same flatbed set up on the rear. Um, big block. And it was beautiful. And uh, the only difference between mine and that one is theirs was four-wheel drive. And mine's only two-wheel. Well, I guess it's technically four wheels, but only the ones in the back. Um, but he was asking $15,000 for that truck. I paid, if I'm not mistaken, $1,200 for this truck. Um, which, in my opinion, was a great deal, even though it looks a little rough around the edges. That's what I wanted. I wanted something to have that kind of rat rodish look to it, the shop truck look. Uh, and it fired right up. It ran great. It, it checked all the boxes that, that I really wanted. I didn't want something beautiful that I got to worry about beating up because it's going to go live out in my place in Keystone. It's going to be running through the bushes and it's going to get backed into trees and I'm going to use it to pull stuff over. I mean, it's it's going to get used like a truck. So why start with something beautiful anyway? Uh, this thing's got character, it's fun looking, and it's got a motor that's going to do and pull really anything I want. So um, that's why I went with this, 1200 bucks to get it. I think I paid another probably $300 or so for the wheels and tires that are on it, three or 400 bucks on um, Marketplace. So I mean, $1,500 or so all in, I got this thing home. And uh, really since then, I haven't put much of anything else into it. This is the first time I've really dumped money into it. Um, all the parts we got, radiator hoses, the um, heater lines, the paint, uh, the belt, and um, I also got some, some carbon brake cleaner just to kind of clean everything off. And all of that stuff all together and a can of Berry Mint was $188. So still we're at like, what then, 17, 1800 bucks, under $2,000. We'll have this thing hopefully looking good, running right, and ready to, ready to see some action. I'm also going to put that um, patina preserver, the wipe on clear coat on this as well. That was a little expensive. I mean, I think that kit is like a hundred and something dollars. So basically I'll be capped out right at $2,000. I'll have this thing where I want it. And, um, and that's really a good deal. I think even cleaning it up the way I'm going to clean it up, getting it where I want it to be. If I were to turn around and try and sell this thing, which eventually I might, if I get bored with it, um, in my opinion, with the, the, character this thing's got, the history behind it, the cool interior with all the U-Haul stuff, and running well, I mean, I, I don't think I'd have a problem selling this thing for four or $5,000, so I should be able to double my money uh, that I've invested in it. And anytime you can double, that's good. Um, but I don't intend to do that just yet. I want to enjoy it and, uh, and love on it a little bit. So we're going to clean it up and make it the way I want. So before we go painting on this block, we're gonna take this Gnarls Barkley coil bracket off here. We're not using a uh, coil with this setup anymore anyhow. So let's get this hunk of metal off here and try and clean up some of these wires. I am gonna run the bolt back in 
so that I can find one that fits it when I inevitably need it to mount something else up on the front of this thing. And I might even still use it as a mount, run a zip tie off of it to hold some of this wiring. I'll probably loom this up so it looks a little prettier though. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get to painting, I suppose. I might tape off and bag off a few things. So we'll do a little bit of prep work. I do want to tape off the spark plug so I don't get paint all over the tips of them. I'm not gonna go crazy covering and masking a bunch of stuff off. I'll just be careful, you know? But a lot of these hoses are getting replaced anyway, so I don't care if stuff gets a little funko, you know? We're gonna change it anyhow. What I get the blue on, overspray that I don't want, I got some black, I can just right back over top and make that go away. We're not looking for show truck, we're just looking for a better and presentable. So I think I decided I'm going to keep the valve cover, the original paint. Because it doesn't really look that bad and kind of keeps it with the cool patina look, you know, not having them shiny and new like everything else is going to look. Well, I don't know about new, but maybe shiny. So I think we're gonna try and leave them be. Got my fancy uh, paint deflector. We're gonna start up high and work our way down. So we're gonna try and hit this intake manifold. It was blue before, so we're going back in with the Ford blue. while we're in here too. She's rebuilt. All right, so we're cleaning up a little bit of the wiring and hoses here. This loom that does the, I guess that would be oil pressure sensor, that term, ring terminal just totally snapped off. Um, the, uh, the power wire for the HEI was literally, they had a ring terminal and the wire just stuck through it and twisted around it. So that isn't ideal either. So I've disconnected those. That also allows me to slide this loom back. And this big bundle of plugs back here, if you can see it, was in the middle of the valve cover here. It looks a whole lot cleaner hiding it and tucking it back behind the valve cover. Let it see those things a little bit more. And um, opens everything up. So we're moving that back, sliding that back. We're gonna adjust the wire length and reconnect all these so that uh, 
everything sits nice and nice and purdy and we got our wiring tidied up on this side pretty nice the bolt down here that or the nut on top of that oil pressure sensor is stripped out it would not come loose it was just spinning inside the sensor unfortunately i don't even know if that sensor will work um, but so I couldn't pull it out to put another ring terminal underneath. So I did the slightly less right thing and put a test alligator clip on it from a set of uh, um, test wires from Harbor Freight and bent them to the shape of that hex head so it fits on there firm. Put that onto the wire, electrical taped it all up, got it zip tied to a couple other things to help tuck it, put it on that bolt provision for the uh, coil adapter there, ran it over and uh, tucked it all the way back to the firewall, got those uh, big bulkhead connections tucked back to and zip tied off to the back. I cut that bad piece out of the tack wire, ran it, shortened it, got it nice and clean, tacked it on here, replaced our uh, vacuum hose for the brake booster, which was all old and brittle and probably leaking. Um, that's pretty much it for this side. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna really go any further on the driver side of this motor. We're just gonna leave everything else be. Um, so we're calling that good. Try and clean some of this. We got some, some main bearings on our hose here. Fix that. I'm going to put a zip tie on that too once we get it dialed in so that uh, hose clamp is tight. The flies like the spray paint, I guess. I had to touch up our block paint a little bit. So driver's side done. We're going to move over to the passenger side over here and uh, work on putting in I gotta reconnect our uh, line here that is it's some kind of uh, basically heated gas vent that helps heat up the carburetor in cold weather. Probably don't even need it here, but I'm gonna reconnect it anyway. It was already connected. It helps get it out of choke easier and quicker. Choke's not even connected on this thing, so it will help warm it up at least. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put that back on. We're gonna run our heater uh, bypass hoses, if I have enough heater hose, I might replace my PCV line, but it's good, it's just old. Straighten that up a little bit, make it less ugly.
like that. Bam. We got uh, hoses on, looking good. I kind of snaked them around nice and pretty like to hide them. Same thing on the other side, we tucked all the wiring for the electrical. It's actually looking pretty clean under here. So it's uh, time to wash my hands, grab some uh, spark plug wires and start putting those on and uh, grab another spark plug wire juice. So here's how cheap I'm trying to be on this project cleaning these wires up and they actually look pretty good they're Excel high temp super stock spiral cores so they're racing but they're dirty as hell so these are ones I have not cleaned yet these are ones I have you can see the difference they clean up nice they look brand new I had them on another truck I had for about a year and uh, one of the wires you notice there's only seven one of the wires was hanging down, it popped off the loom, got wrapped around the fan blade because they were way too long and yanked the uh, <laughs> yanked the uh, end off the spark plug and the distributor side. It got so wrapped around and yanked around everywhere. So it drove me nuts. It was in a pretty nice truck. So I went ahead and changed them all and put new Excel ones that were yellow and they all matched because it was driving me nuts. I had one that wasn't red. Um, so I stuck them in a box, figured to save them for a rainy day. This is that rainy day. Um, I do have plenty of other wires. So here's another eight millimeter, but it's gray. We're going to clean that one up too. We're going to put that probably on the number one, uh, cylinder. So at least it looks on purpose and it'll be easier for me to tell which one to stick the probe on when I'm checking timing. Well, I'm starting to run out of back. I'm starting to, uh, feel like an old man. But I'm going to lean over this thing a little bit more and it's time to go ahead and start putting these oh start putting these plugs back on Coming in for round two, I made wire looms for the other side, and I'll end up doing the same over here. So go with that, go ahead and lock that in and work our way backwards. So you need four zip ties to make your own loom. Most of you probably know this trick if you're watching my shenanigans. Or I'll teach on the ones that don't. Wrap one all the way around all the wires you want. You can leave it real loose for now. And then go in between each wire, like so. And run your zip tie, like so. Around your other zip tie you ran between the two wires. 
These you can tighten up a little bit, leave some slack. You can adjust them in a second. So you're gonna put three around it like that to separate your wires. That's gonna give you the space that you're looking for. So those you can tighten down just a little bit as you go, figure out how you want your slack, your tension to look. You can start to choke down your main. I want that harness to be up a little more, probably like right here. that look. Need a little more on that one. Then give these a cinch down once you got them close. Boom, look at that. Nice and tight. That's probably where we want them right now. I'll leave them so I can move them to adjust them a little bit and then once you get it totally locked in you cut these off and then you can even flip these around to the bottom so you don't see them make it look real professional. Before I go doing all that I gotta figure out what to do with the rest of the spaghetti from all this. Belts on, upper red hose in. Spare to the expense of watching me flounder around down there. But I uh, was able to crawl under, take one breaker bar and wedge the alternator to gap it, tension the belt, and then I was able to take my other arm and wrench down, tighten it. I got the, what I assume to be the worst of the hoses on. It really wasn't that bad. Uh, measured it up, cut it longer than I thought I would need it to be just to be safe. Put it on this end, checked it again. Measured again, cut it that second time, ended up being perfect, and uh, cinched it down so it's tight. Now I just have the one other hose to do. But one thing I did have to do, I'll show you, in case you've got one of these. When I put the hose on, that bend wasn't exactly right, and there's a notch, a factory notch in this thing where it's supposed to kind of run down and in. This didn't have as sharp of a curve at first, so I actually had to trim this. And I just took my wire cutters and nipped it, and then took my pliers and bent it and broke it off. And then I took the file and filed it down smooth, so nothing will be in the way. But that worked out well. Now that's in. I'll probably paint that while we're in here. And just gotta do this lower hose now, so we'll go ahead and get to work on him. So this one, Basically, gonna go just like this. I am gonna need to trim a little bit, but not much. I might try it without trimming and see what happens. Hose clamp orientation. We want this one to go probably this way. This one doesn't really matter. Let's say this way. Alright. Engine first. And then onto the rad. Give it a little twist.
Perfect. All right. Let's run these things home. Lowers in. How about that? She is looking really good. The distributor being blue kind of drives me nuts, so I may actually take it out and paint it. But otherwise, she's looking real nice. The wire loom came out actually pretty good. Looks purposeful. Looks clean. Painted the... Uh, Top of the air filter housing, because it was all rusty. Got our new belt on, got our new hoses in. Replaced the heater core lines. I went ahead and replaced this bypass line, looped it around. The only line I did not change is this one here. So we'll see if that comes back to bite us. All the other coolant lines are replaced. All the PCV stuff's hooked back up. I did change the brake booster line. All we gotta do now is uh, put some more water back in it in the uh, radiator, clean the battery terminals, put those back on. And then I think she's ready to fire up, see if it runs better, see if we got rid of that miss, and then check timing. One thing I need to do for that is I gotta figure out where the timing marks are on this particular motor, so. I'll be crawling underneath and seeing. I see the needle, I just don't know where the point is on the actual crank. Ugh. There's what almost looks like a mark and there's a dimple here, but I don't know if that means anything. I'll have to do some Google research and see what that says. Check it out, it looks like it runs off beer or whiskey. It's uh, lovely. I'm running enough old gas that I had in that jug that came out of the old 83 F-150. That was definitely old and bad, so should have run great in this. All right, we're refilling the radiator with distilled water. <laughs> and uh, got it mostly full up. I'm going to go ahead and fire it off. And... Uh, let it run, get all the air out of here. All right, after a slight leaky malfunction from a water pump line, we've got everything tight, sealed up, battery is connected temporarily. We still gotta clean those terminals up real good. Everything is out of the way. Radiator's mostly full. We're gonna top it off as soon as we get it up and running and bleed it and burp it. Everything else looks good. Plugs, wires, all that's connected. Distributors connected back up. We should be ready to fire. Water pump's a little noisy. The belt's tight, it's not rubbing on anything. No leaks that I see. Water pump sounds like it's got rocks on it. 
just rebuild it. battery died so I lost you for a minute but while I was away put a new positive battery cable on I had this short one it's actually from a BMW 3 series uh, got out of the junkyard it was a nice looking cable and it was a dollar so I bought it and um, reconnected that cleaned our terminals up I went ahead and actually reused the ratchet strap but I fancied it up a little bit I um, drilled a hole and ran a bolt through and actually bolted the strap and cut the excess off. Hooked it on the other side to the original, um, you know, grab point for the metal bracket that used to be here. And then I spray painted it a little bit to clean it up. It'll do the job. It kind of matches the rest of the truck. Um, cleaned everything else up. Everything's back together. Everything's done here. So under the hood, we're basically finished for today, except for cleaning up all the tools and mess. But uh, since I've still got a wild hair and some time, I wanted to go ahead and work on some body work and uh, didn't want to do that without you guys. I already pulled this bolt that holds the support behind the fender here out. This was curled up all the way up underneath this. You can see the line where it was bent in half. So I started bending that back and then I was like, well, let me get a battery charger here. So I'm going to throw you up. I'm going to try and bend the rest of this fender out. This fender is actually too low, too. Um, and I don't know that it's actually um, just the fender. Looking at it, this whole inner support is all bent and rusted and jacked up. I tried to lift up on it, and the whole front clip started shifting. So, so we're going to try and bend back what we can and brace it and support it a little bit more as well. I might actually add a couple little bracing points. The, uh, the body panels on this truck are actually in pretty good shape, except for this front core support is pretty awful. Um, it's been bent on and smashed, and it's just seen a lot. But uh, we're going to play around and see what we can straighten up on it. I think that's probably the best angle to get you guys in at. Um, what I'm going to try and do is get everything bent out that's curled up. I mean, it's pretty, pretty jacked up here, but we're going to try and get this out, pop some of these in, straighten this up. Doesn't need to be perfect. We're not looking for perfect anywhere on this truck, but what we are looking for is a decent presentable spot to get it locked in with when we put that clear coat on. All right, here's some all time, probably dumbest stuff you shouldn't do. I don't know what number it falls on the list, but it's up there. And we've got a piece of wood up under the support on a jack. We're just going to give her some. Well, board came through. Good. Came through because this raised up, which is good. That's what we wanted. Now, what the hell size? Nine sixteenths.
bends on this a little bit, get up, bend this upwards. Far from perfect, but it ain't bad. Looks a whole lot better than it did. And it's fairly even across the front now. gal but hey she's getting there old one-eyed willy got her looking buck tooth maybe we just leave it like that and call her buck tooth no, probably not some of my finest work there went kind of wild with the zip ties on the uh Passenger side headlight got it angled down just right so I think it won't blind anyone and it's nice and firm and anchored. This one actually is uh, works pretty good right where it's at. I think I'm just going to leave it be. It's slightly angled down, it's angled pretty well in, it's firm in there. I'm not going to mess with it. It looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look real good, but it looks good for what it was. And, uh, show you the whole actual bucket what i would call the bucket for the headlight is smashed way back too far in here so i zip tied there's only one bracket on these lights so i zip tied around the top post there and i was able to get some anchor points in for the actual bezel which is nice um, and then for the bottom i actually just ran zip ties around the bottom and then just on the lip of it to keep it angled and tucked back and it's firm in there it's set in a little far it's recessed a lot farther than the other one if you look but it is in there and it is in there pretty well level so we're gonna leave it be just like that we got the grill in this one was missing this little thing here that's why I actually had it because I replaced some that I had that I didn't like because of that and I hung on to it I'm glad I did so we're going to call this pretty well done. That gap still not the best, but we'll live with it. I'm calling this perfect for what we're doing. Where we're going, we don't need roads. All right, so she's basically buttoned up in the front. Looking a lot better. Not perfect, but that's exactly what we are going for. Looking a whole lot better under here. All new rubbers and electricals and things. Nice and squared away. We've got, uh, even doing all of our adjustments, actually loosened up that hood latch a little bit. 
which is cool. Whee! Let's give it a little juicy juice. Bam! That sits pretty good, actually. I'm satisfied with that. We got everything bent as back to the right spot as we're going to get. That chrome trim at the top even looks pretty close. Hood line's good. And we fixed that fender too so the door's not going to rub on it, which is nice. We get that gap back, so that should clear. Oh yeah. Disco. She's a little sketchy a little bit. She's going to be purdy when she's all shined up. It's going to be a pretty cool paint scheme, I think. I'm going to sand in some of that different color uh, primers and paints and bondos to get it some character. You can see a little bit of that U-Haul orange bleeding through in spots. So, like, this is an original fender, I think. I'm going to try and get into some of that orange. Um, this door, I don't know if it is or not. I can't really tell. But I'm thinking the doors are not, so I won't go sanding too hard into them. But you can see there's definitely some orange in this uh, rear cab area, so I'm going to sand into that, expose some. I don't know if it's an original hood. I'm thinking not, but I'll probably sand in some of this. Like There's like five or six different layers of different primers and paints on this. This fender, I, I think, well, it might be original. There is some orange in it. But it's got like green and blue and all kinds of stuff. Oh, I didn't notice this was bent. There we go. Fixed. It's got some different colors going on. I, I think it would have been really cool to have all the blue and white. Still need to get some of these. Uh, this roof line, he's done some Bondo work. We got to do some sanding on. I'll put a little bit of primer over that before we clear it, but she's getting close. I think tomorrow is going to be sand prep prime day, and then probably that's Friday, so probably Saturday will be our clear coat day. And then I'm calling her done, and I, uh, I might even get a tag slapped on this thing, and Make it a uh, make it a real deal. We'll see.